Okay, so I got my Anderson easel set up here. I'm gonna be painting on a 16 by 24 inch panel. Uh, this has just got three coats of gesso and some pumice in the mixture. Uh, and I've lined it up uh, so the panel is in line with the wind. I'm gonna be using Liquid Original as my medium. My usual selection of brushes here, flats, uh, both synthetic and natural bristle odorless mineral spirits in a brush washer and my usual palette of colors. I'm gonna work with the scene that's behind me here. It's a scene you guys may have seen me paint before. I have been like busy working on preparing for my show at Studio Gallery, which opens October 6, 2022 in San Francisco. I'll also put a link down below to Studio Gallery. Um, and uh, that show should probably be online early October and there'll be more about that. I'll talk about it here on, on the channel but I just needed a break. I wanted to come out and paint. And so I came to a familiar spot and actually I'm really surprised. It is gorgeous out here. You know, a light breeze, but usually it's like overcast and super windy. So um, this is really nice. So let me show you what I'm thinking. I kind of want to move these rocks here so they're further out. Like, I don't like the fact that there's like a vertical lineup of the rocks here. I'd like it to kind of be more going out in this direction. Also, there's some nice fog on the distant horizon there. I'll, I'll be including that. All right, going with a high horizon because most of the interest is going to be in this area. I'm going to have the fog kind of bump up a little bit over here. I'm just trying to get big shapes in place, you know, so that I have an interesting overall design. So I'm using the rocks out here kind of just as inspiration but not staying exactly true, you know, to what I'm seeing. Um, let's see, it kind of comes like this. And yeah, I want to have these rocks come out like on an angle, maybe leading out towards this fog bank and then possibly having, you know, some atmospheric perspective pushing these rocks back over here. And I'll sort of have the waves coming in in a radial fashion like that. I might exaggerate that a little bit, you know, so that it's kind of like, maybe like that. Once I get these basic shapes in place, if I like the arrangement, um, then, you know, I'll come back and I'll refine these shapes. All right, at this point, I've refined some of the shapes and I just stepped back to take a look at the composition. And uh, so I do like the arrangement. I've got, you know, some cypress trees over here. And as I mentioned, I kind of exaggerated, you know, the rocks going out in this direction. Uh, and then there's that fog bank out there. I'll probably put a little wave or something out here as well. Uh, but that's the basic idea. So now I'm gonna start blocking in the darks. For my dark mixture, I am using ultramarine blue and uh, burnt sienna. And I'm thinning with a bit of liquid. All right, so at this point, I'll squint at the scene and look for the darkest areas, which are like the base of the rocks and then also in the trees here. Uh, I'll probably mix up a different color for the darks of the trees, kind of lean it more towards blue. I'm using a fairly large brush for this. This is a number eight natural bristle and the thing i like is it's that it allows me to you know uh use quite a bit of paint it holds a lot of paint and it also um, prevents me from getting too careful or too picky uh, which i like because i want the rocks not to look careful i want them to be sort of spontaneous uh, as usual keeping the mixture sort of transparent there may be areas where i come in and darken but for now, starting with a transparent dark, uh, I find is really nice. It also, you know, it, it's sort of, I don't know, it's more luminous than having an opaque dark. And luminosity is what I'm after in my seascapes and landscapes. You know, one thing that's kind of fun to do is look at, look at paintings either on Instagram or even famous paintings and look for the light and ask yourself if the light seems authentic. 
it's kind of fun when you look at paintings with that in mind and say, yeah, does this light, does it, is it convincing light? Because what you are painting is you're painting, you know, we are painting light, basically. So I'm noticing some of the shadows in the rocks here have sort of a blue tint to them. So I'm mixing in some ultramarine and titanium white into my dark mixture. And again, just squinting, squinting and looking for some of those dark shapes in the rocks. Basically what I'm looking for is an interesting light and dark pattern. And I'm not worried about being exactly true to the scene because I am paying attention to, you know, design, abstract design. It's one of my favorite things about painting landscapes or seascapes is there's so much freedom to design. All right, so next I'm mixing a color for the dark portion of the trees. And I'm starting with a mixture of ultramarine blue, dioxazine purple, and uh, burnt sienna. So it's kind of a purplish color. And oftentimes what I'll do is just, you know, strike out a few lines to indicate where the trunks of the trees are and get those put in place first. I usually like to work fairly quickly doing this and not overthink it. I'm gonna have some areas, you know, of like sky holes coming through. So first I'll kind of put the skeletal, you know, like the framework in and then I can start massing in more of the foliage. And I don't want these trees to all be too parallel. It's like one trunk actually that's even going off at an angle like that maybe. And you may have seen me do this before, but I'll leave little areas of, um, you know, that'll be the sky holes. There's kind of a large area in here that's open. And then there's a sort of dark shadowy area coming down kind of at an angle. And also there's some you know, dark patterns through here too. A lot of times what I'll do is just work quickly and cover the area and then step back and and then decide which, you know, how what I want to emphasize. All right, so now I'm going to work on the sky and there's sort of like a cerulean color in there and then also some purple. For the cerulean portion, I'm just using um, titanium white and thalo blue. And for the purplish portion, I'm using dioxazine purple um, ultramarine blue, titanium white, and a touch of yellow ochre to kind of gray it down. It's kind of some clouds that are running off the top or a fog, you know, broken fog. Something like that. And this kind of comes up over here and then bits of fog through the trees. All right, and now I'm gonna put in the cerulean portion. The thalo is really nice because you see how this is like kind of high value, but there's nice saturation. Um, as long as you keep the mix fairly clean. So there's a nice like cerulean purple relationship there. All right, I'm adding some yellow ochre to the purple mixture because I'm seeing some sort of uh, warmer, yellower spots in the, in the fog. It's mostly like right in this area here. It looks like I could actually add a little bit more yellow to that. I'm just gonna mix right into this bit of yellow ochre and see what happens. All right, so that's a bit warmer. I might have to adjust that later, but that's a good start. I'm gonna mix up a color for the water and uh, paying attention to values here. I want to make sure that the blue of the water is dark enough so that the white water stands out and Yet, you know, you can look at the darkest darks here. The water is definitely lighter than the darkest darks So maybe just slightly darker than a mid-tone for this blue here. I'm using a mixture of uh, titanium white ultramarine blue and a bit of alizarin crimson and then also some burnt sienna to kind of gray it down that looks a little bit dark. So adding a little bit of titanium white to it. All right, that's a little better there. And I'm paying attention to the relationship, you know, at the horizon as well. You know, making sure that the, you know, the value relationship between the water and the sky looks uh, accurate or is working. So I try to work fairly quickly, almost like the way I do when I'm painting the trees and just sort of leave some white water patterns and I can kind of pick and choose. Maybe through here. Keeping this paint fairly thin too. There's a lot of white water around this rock. And also lighter 
a lighter color. The water's like sort of a green color here. Mixing in a little bit of ultramarine to darken it just a bit. This area in here seems to be a little bit darker. There's kind of some waves coming through as well. And maybe I'll just indicate some of those with a darker line. The nice thing about all of this is it's just so, um, you can be so spontaneous. And if something doesn't work, you can just fix it quite easily. Down here, it gets greener. So I might want to add some yellow to that. I think I'm going to add some CAD yellow medium. Still keeping it fairly, uh, you know, grayed down, not very saturated. I'll come in later with more saturated colors. And typically what I'm doing is I'm standing back quite a ways to make sure that the overall pattern is looking interesting or is working. Next I'm going to mix a color for the rocks and there's quite a bit of variety. I mean obviously like right here it's a bit warmer. Uh, but I'm going to go with like a mid-tone gray. I still want it to be darker than the white water so yeah paying attention to values. I'm mixing with the palette in direct light so I'm going to push the saturation because I know that when this gets indoors under normal lighting uh, circumstances it's going to be a lot less saturated. So I tend to push the warmth and the saturation and also lighten the value because it's going to appear darker when it's indoors. So this is kind of a mid-tone, warm gray. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, and you can see the white water would be over here. So that, that works. I think that's a good starting point. And I'm keeping this thin because I'm going to come over and adjust, you know, look for shifts in temperature and value in these rocks. But for now, this is a good, you know, this is a good starting uh, place or a good starting color and value to get me going. And it's easy enough to come over this with thicker paint and make, you know, the adjustments. Uh, there's a rock down here as well. I like kind of including rocks in the foreground, you know, so there is a sense of depth. All right, so I'm not gonna paint in this area because it gets a, quite a bit lighter in value over here and warmer. All right, but overall I'm liking the design. I do feel like I need more white water, so I'll probably erase out a white water pattern using uh, a paper towel. But overall, I'm feeling pretty good about it. So now I'm gonna mix up some of these orange tones here. I'm using a mixture of cadmium red light and cadmium yellow medium and some uh, titanium white. Again, I'm pushing the saturation a bit because I know this is gonna appear less saturated once it gets indoors. Um, there are some areas, you know, where it's lighter in value, more of a yellow tone. For now, I just kind of want to get this darker, you know, sort of orange color in here established. There's little hints here and there out in the rocks. And then down here as well. All right, I'm going to lighten it up a little bit with some titanium white. Some areas that are lighter in here. That looks a little bit too cool, but that's okay. I'm going to go with it for now. I can always warm those areas up later if I want. Okay, so now I'm mixing up a color for some of the greener portions around the rocks. And I'm using a little bit of cobalt teal, cadmium yellow medium, uh, titanium white, and I've actually mixed in a bit of uh, alizarin crimson to kind of gray it down. Graying down the colors using complements. So it was too green, so I added red to kind of calm that down a bit and then I'll add some of those green areas out here. The water does tend to get like more green as it gets shallower. Yeah like maybe in here. I don't want to really put white water down here because I don't want to draw the eye too much in this direction and there's quite a bit of it out in this area too. And a little bit over by these rocks. As I said when it gets shallow you get more of those green colors. Okay, and that's more or less the block in right there. Uh, next, you know, I'll lay in the white portions, the white water portions. My go-to mixture for the white water is titanium white with a bit of ultramarine blue in it. I can come over this later with some warmer passages, like say, you know, titanium white with a bit of yellow in it. Usually I'll use, um, uh, you know, cadmium yellow lemon. And then you got the, you know, the blue and the yellow, or, or this kind of purplish in a way. So you have those complements, the, you know, purple playing against the yellow.
and I'm going in fairly thick because I want it to be as light in value as possible. And sometimes I try to, you know, mimic the motion of the water with the brush. And just like that, fog came in and the scene has completely changed. So here's what I finished up with. And as I mentioned, the light changed uh, really quickly. Fog came in, which obviously changed the values and the colors completely. I think I could have pushed the warm colors in here a little bit more actually to get more of a light effect. Also more contrast in the trees. All right, we can go in for a closer look here. Just see the brush work. And I did try to keep, uh, I tried to add some thick paint over here, you know, especially in the lighter tones. All right, so hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel, there's a Patreon link down below. Got a bunch of extra videos on there and a materials list, so check it out. Uh, also, if you've got any questions for Q&A, uh, put them in the comments below as well. Other than that, stay creative. See you guys in the next video.